Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your reading for uh, where you will be one year from now. Uh, we're just going to jump right in here and see what comes up for you here. I have to, um, unfortunately, because YouTube is run by a bunch of 12-year-olds, I have to cover up the bottom of this card, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But um, we're going to see what is, like I said, what is going on for you at this time. Uh, and each row is just going to represent kind of like one aspect of your life or something uh, that will be going on one year from now. So in your first position here, you have this dolphin card and it says the S word. Let's let's try to put this in the most G-rated way possible. Uh, like what, two, two adults wrestling. Let, let's say that, right? And uh, you have this trust card as well. And uh, I feel for some of you that like one year from now, you could be, um, you know, you could be wrestling with someone, uh, but like in a fun, feel good type of way, right? Something that you enjoy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, ask your mom when you get older. But what I would say here is that I feel like this is someone where there's like a lot of trust. And the other thing that I would say here is 10 of cups. 10 of cups is fortune after difficulty, uh, good things coming in for you after a difficult period of time. So I feel for a lot of you that there is going to be a lot of happiness and definitely could be love, a very desireful connection. And so I feel like there's just going to be a lot of desire between you and another person. Uh, you even have the king and queen of cups here, which is like divine counterparts. Could be a water sign here, Taurus, but honestly, it could be any sign. Uh, to me, these two, they just represent like a very deep emotional connection and there's clearly a very deep emotional connection here. And you have the Two of Cups as well. So clearly there's a deep emotional connection. You have the King of Pentacles, something permanent. So this definitely looks like a very good uh, connection to me, if you want love. Uh, you also have the Page of Pentacles. So I would say this is someone new. I kind of feel like you're meeting this person this year, 2023. So, uh, in or if you haven't already, some of you have already met this person. And uh, I feel like there's communication going on here. It could be something long distance as well. And, um, so, there, you know, distance could be something that needs to be overcome. I feel like I've said this to you recently as well, Taurus. And, you know, that that just could be, you know, that could just be the case, basically, that there is a very strong connection. I feel like this person's different. I've never noticed this before. <laughs> but if you look at the grapes above her head, there is a cluster of, like, green grapes. And I don't know, I, I, like, I kind of feel like you could be attracting a person who, you know, among, among a bunch, uh, amongst a bunch of purple grapes, they're like green, you know? <laughs> I don't know, that doesn't sound like a good thing, but I feel like it is a good thing. So I feel like they're very different. You have the Knight of Wands here. Um, again, if you're meeting someone new, everybody's been getting this energy recently of things, of, of like people kind of being a little bit more reserved. And that's really, I don't really get Wounded Warrior here. I do think, you know, we all have wounds and issues and things like that, but... You know, I feel like this person just maybe like a little bit more reserved or maybe they've been hurt in the past so they don't like immediately rush into anything. But what I would say is that in 2023, uh, you know, this might, it, it looks to me like things are kind of developing, but you go to the Eight of Wands to the Sun. So I would say like a year from now, you could go from things developing this year to things moving forward very quickly next year. It seems to me like this person, maybe they just want to take their time, see how things go right now. And, but again, it looks to me like this is, is someone you could have a family with, with the Ten of Cups, if you want love. Uh, let's see here, uh, with the Nine of Wands, you have the Four of Pentacles. And yeah, something very stable. I also feel like you're going to be in a much better position financially, Jupiter, in your first house. <laughs> By this time next year, you will have Jupiter. Well, you know, basically, you'll have Jupiter in your first house in Taurus. And with Uranus there, I don't know. I think this could be very good for you. Uranus is very unpredictable. But what I would say is that I have found that, you know, to me with Jupiter there, I think that the surprises are going to be positive financial surprises that you will be experiencing. So a lot of, like, financial improvements coming in for you. With the... um. Page of Pentacles, you have the Queen of Wands. Yes, a lot of desire here. Uh, now that we're past like four minutes, I can say this. A lot of sexual energy. That's what I was trying to say at the beginning if you couldn't catch on to my drift here. But you have the Queen of Wands here. So a lot of desire, a lot of attraction between the two of you. And um, I would also encourage you to follow your desires because you have the sun. And whenever you have like the Queen of Wands, the sun... To me, this represents the universe trying to get your attention. The universe could be telling you, hey, I want you to work on this project. And, you know, obviously it, it might not be that clear from the universe, but I feel like you're kind of opening up to new ways of doing things. 
Uh, with the Ten of Wands, you have the Five of Pentacles. Again, I do get a little bit, just like a tiny bit of reserved energy. I wouldn't even call it guarded energy, but I feel like someone, you know, if you're meeting a new person, just know that they've probably been left out in the cold in the past. And kind of what I'm getting here is that, you know, I feel like this person is has maybe had a rough relationship, like the last one. And I feel like this person like would ignore them and things like that. Just looking at some of these cards here, it's like you're dealing with a person who is used to a very cold energy. The sun is literally saying, if you want this to work, be the opposite, be a warm energy for this person. And I'm not saying that we should, you know, only, people always come at me and they're like, how dare you suggest I do something for the person that I could potentially love? I'm like, okay, that's gonna work out great for you, number one. But number two, uh, what I would say here is I'm not saying like, you know, they'll be warm to you as well. This is not like, I don't know where this conflict is coming from, whatever, but I would just be warm to this person if you like them. Uh, you have this, um, for your next thing, you have this deep breath card. Take a deep breath, right? Slow things down. Don't rush anything at this time. Sometimes I think that if we're in a time of experimentation like we are right now, it could also be a little bit frustrating because the ideas, the plans that we have, the things that we want to do, they don't necessarily always work out very quickly. And, you know, that's what I would say here. Uh, so again, you could be like experimenting, trying new things, and things could be very slow. You have the Seven of Swords, the Eight of Wands, and the Wheel of Fortune. I do have a very weird story popping into my head here uh, for you, Taurus. Like again, if you're meeting, if you're meeting a new person, I kind of do feel like I would be careful of their past person. They might even say something to you about this, Taurus. Like they might say, "Hey, my past person, I've blocked them, but they always find a way to pop up, and they might contact you as well." I don't know. It's something weird popping into my head here where it's like their ex might contact you trying to say stuff. I feel like they're just, they just do not want to let this person move on. So you might meet a new person. I feel like they're a great person, but again, their ex might say things to you that, um, you know, could ruin it. So block their ex. <laughs> Maybe you need to block their ex. I don't know. It's popping into my head. So I have to say it. You have the eight of wands here. So there's quick success coming in for you again, one year from now. It makes perfect sense to me that things would be moving forward quickly. You're getting to the good part of Uranus and Taurus, like having Uranus in your first house there. A little bit unpredictable, but as I've said to you for a long time, Taurus, you know, I kind of like it because for a lot of you, I feel like there's a major focus on your own personal freedom. A lot of the triggers that you have experienced like, you know, before 2023 or like from 2023 backwards, even though we're not at the end of 2023 yet, we're doing one year from now, right? So, you know, from there backwards, it's kind of like a lot of these triggers were probably triggers where you would enter into situations that made you feel constricted or a lack of freedom. You know, that that could be anything, literally. It could be like living somewhere where you don't feel free. It could be living with people that make you don't feel free. It could be being with a person that makes you feel that way. Take it how it resonates. But, you know, I feel like this is the time where things change. It's like you're finally this year, 20, when we get from to a year from now, it's like you're feeling free. You're feeling like you're in control of your destiny with the Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is a card of controlling your destiny, controlling like the way things change in your life. That's what's popping into my head. I also feel like more warmth. Again, I kind of like this. This is the Wheel of the Year Tarot. And you can see there's like four seasons, but I almost feel that you're entering into a period of warmth, like where there is just like this warm energy. I can't explain it. I said it earlier. Um, I was kind of getting it as you needing to be warm to a person. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I feel like it's like everything. It's like once you enter this period, not only will you want to be warm to people, but I think there's warmth. With the Seven of Swords, I'm telling you right now, this is like communication coming from an ex or something like that, but it's not even your ex. <laughs> That's literally what's popping into my head. So I would be very careful of this person. I feel like they're a liar anyway. They're showing up as a seven of swords. You know, they might be coming at you telling you like, oh, you know, he cheated on me or she cheated on me, take out resonates, whatever, whatever gender, I don't care. And what I would say here is it's like, you know, they might be saying that, but it's not true. I feel like they're a liar. So, you know, I would be very careful of that. I would block communication. You might need to block your ex as well. With the eight of wands, you have the five of swords. Yeah, for a lot of you, you're just stepping out into the unknown. This is a card of like winning at all cost. So again, there might be a person from the past that is not even your person that is just trying to win at all costs. They can't allow this person to be happy. Uh, with the Wheel of Fortune, you have the Three of Cups. Like, do I need to say more? Uh, you know, third party. I don't really read the Three of Cups as a third party unless it shows up with like something like the Seven of Swords. And, you know, I would just say be careful there. For others, I am getting something about like a family reunion. You have a lot of cards of happiness about family 
And I even am getting things about like family wealth, you know, going straight across to the King of Pentacles, which is your energy, Taurus. A lot of you could be working on building, leaving a legacy. I always say this, that with Uranus and Taurus, I think everybody's focused on this, but it's in your sign. <laughs> so you are definitely going to be focused on like building, you know, you could be focused on building generational wealth for your family. Um, you could be getting into a relationship with a person you build generational wealth with, whatever it is, doesn't matter, but I feel like it's a good thing. Uh, next, you have this moth spirit for your next thing, and it says surrender now. For some of you, I feel like you're... Um, I feel like you are kind of focusing on surrendering to love. So some of you, this is clearly, there's a lot of love here. So I feel for some of you, this is clearly a love reading. And you could be just like surrendering to allowing love into your life. Uh, you could even be looking at some things that you resist in love. And, you know, this you could be attracting a person who triggers those things. <laughs> Not in a bad way. You know, it's like, I think we all have things that it's like, you know, I don't know, I'm like a Pisces. It's hard for me personally. I don't know. It's hard for me to allow people into my space, like just my my home and things like that because it's like I like to do my own thing, right? And I'm like super independent. So, you know, it's like some of you might have some of those triggers where it's like, obviously, if you want to be with a person, you have to get over it, right? I have to get over it, plain and simple. <laughs> so what I would say here is you could be working on some of those things in love. Uh, I also feel that you're surrendering to an opportunity. And this is something that you're really meant to do. Some of you, I kind of get this sense here of doing some like very spiritual work. You know, it's like you have this deep breath card, you have the king and queen of cups here. And so for some of you, I feel that you're doing some deep spiritual work. You could even be starting like a YouTube channel, a podcast, something like that about spirituality or about, you know, some sort of spiritual topic. I'm not sure what it would be. It could be anything. And if you're doing that, I feel like that could be very good for you. I also feel this could be the person, you know, it could be the king or the queen, take how it resonates, uh, that is coming in for you. And I feel like they have very deep emotions. I feel like they're very, like, clear. And the funny thing is, is I feel like, the, I feel like saying the word careless. This person is not careless. I want to stress that they are not careless. I feel like they just say things because they don't care anymore. <laughs> in, like, in a good way. I feel like they just kind of, you know, they bear their soul. It's like, you know, it's like one of those things where if you listen to these relationship experts on YouTube, they all say like, oh, on a first date, don't talk about exes and things like that. But it's like, I think what a lot of these relationship experts don't understand is it's like the place that a person is coming from matters more. It's like, you know, I don't really have any good examples for you, Taurus, but it's like a person can tell you, oh, you know, my last ex did X, Y, and Z, and it can be like, ugh. This person, I feel like the way they say things and like the confidence, I don't know, there's something different about the way they present things that where you're, it just doesn't, it doesn't come off as like cringy, right? It doesn't come off that way. And um, I also feel like in other areas of life as well, I feel like they'll just, they just speak their mind, you know? And like it's like, that's the type of person that they are. They're not, there's no tryhardness about it here. Taurus. And I think that's the thing is it's like, you know, sometimes you'll be on a date with a person and they'll say things and you could tell that it's like they're trying. This person doesn't try, but in like a good way. <laughs> I feel like they just say stuff because they that's who they are. It's, you know, to me, there's like, there's a big difference between those two things. I hope that makes sense. Uh, you have the five of cups here. Again, I feel like there's some big opportunities for you in letting go of something. I would just be careful of attachments as well. And I don't mean in love. I mean, well, it could be love, but it could be every single area of your life. It just seems to me like we're entering into a time where if you have your mind set on like some sort of, you know, idea in business, it, it, if you're too stuck on that idea, it might not work because there might be something else that you have to try. So don't be afraid to try new things is kind of what I'm getting here. I do feel like a past person could be there. Past person has regrets, but too bad. Uh, you have the sun here. Clearly, there's a lot of warmth and happiness coming in for you uh, over the next year. Also, what I would say is this guy here on this uh, <laughs> this sun card, this is like my favorite sun card, by the way. He has those antlers, obviously, and antlers on animals kind of represent tapping into, you know, a higher uh, source or a higher power or something like that. So, you know, I feel for a lot of you that you could be tapping into kind of like, um, you know, more of this spiritual side of things over the next like year. And uh, I don't know why it's so important, but it seems very important to me. Uh, with the King of Cups, yes, are you kidding? You have the Emperor. Could be a fire sign that you're attracting. You have a lot of fire here. Aries, you know, the Leo. But, you know, take it how it resonates. Could just be a fiery person. Again, this person's a boss. And, and again, I think 
I, I really don't have any good words to explain. It doesn't matter what gender this person is. It's like the way, the place that they're coming from is what's attractive. I feel like they could say things that aren't attractive if it was like someone else, right? But it's like the place that this person comes from, it's because it's genuine. Maybe that's what it is. It's like they're not coming from some try hard place, right? It's just who they are. Uh, with the Five of Cups, you have the Hermit. Some of you could be dealing with a Virgo as well. And so, you know, I just feel like this could be a Virgo. I feel for others that, you know, I always say this to you and I really don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but what I would say is, it's like there's something inside of you that needs to come out. There's something inside of you that needs to be, it's like a hidden talent, gift, skill, or ability, right? And it's something that you need to present to the world. But it's almost like, you know, there's like this mask that needs to come off. And I'm not saying that you're wearing a mask, but let me give you an example, right? It's like, I'm I, I'm Black Moon, Lilith, and Leo, right, in my astrology. And I think that, I think I've said this to you before, Taurus, that this type of energy reminds me of Black Moon, Lilith, and Leo energy. People who have Black Moon, Lilith, and Leo, they need to learn how to act. They need to learn how to play. They And, and we're not talking about acting like wearing a mask. We're talking about acting as in expressing emotions, having fun. You know, it's like as a kid, I was super serious. I stopped believing in Santa Claus when I was two years old, literally. Uh, I was, um, you know, I had like no imagination and everything like that. So it's about like needing to learn how to play um, and needing to learn how to be playful. And, you know, that's kind of like what I get here where it's like your true self needs to come out. And, you know, this could be like how you present yourself online. Like if you have a YouTube channel or something, it's like I get this like holding this more reserved holding back energy. So for those of you that are, you know, trying to grow a YouTube channel, it doesn't even have to be, you could be trying to grow in your career or your business. It's like, once your true self comes out, I think that will be very good for you. I literally feel for some of you that like going to improv or something, just like shaking it out, right? <laughs> um, just learning not to care would be a really good idea uh, with this energy, especially like now. I would do it now so that by the time we get to one year from now, you're ready to go. With the sun, you have the justice card, much more fairness coming into your life, much more even energy as well. I kind of have a feeling that that Jupiter with the Aries, uh, you know, I mean, sorry, the Jupiter going into your sign with uh, Uranus one year from now, it'll make things a little bit more even. Uh, Jupiter make, expands, it makes things more positive. You could argue that Uranus makes things chaotic. You know, Uranus can be good, it can be bad. It, it's kind of like both energies, right? And you could say that Jupiter could expand that. But what I would say is I, I feel like you're feeling much more stable. You're feeling much more secure. Like you can make decisions and, you know, things provide feedback or you get some answers. So I, I don't know. I, f I feel like it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Uh, next, for your fourth thing, you have this uh, full moon in Capricorn. It says, take a reality check here. And I feel like there is, it's like there will be a lot of reality checks. <laughs> and definitely that Jupiter and Uranus energy is definitely going to bring in some reality checks. I've said to everyone else as well, that having Saturn going into Pisces as well is definitely going to be a reality check. We have Neptune in Pisces and then Saturn on top of it. It's like Neptune is not reality. <laughs> it's like some sort of crazy ass ideas that we have. When we get Saturn in there, it's like we can finally have a reality check. We can finally see things for how they actually are and we can gain some clarity. So I feel like there is clarity here. You have the Queen of Cups, again, Divine Counterparts right here. Two of Cups, Divine Counterparts and the King of Pentacles, you. So if you're attracting a person... Uh, it could be a person you have children with. Again, this is the mother right here. But it could also just be you. Uh, you know, I do feel like for others that there is some sort of connection between you and something that you're working on. I say that because the Two of Cups can represent you and your higher self. It can represent the communication that you have with your higher self. And we were talking about something here about like a spiritual, you know, something spiritual in your life where there could be some information that you connect with spiritually. And I feel like that, information could be, you know, kind of like guiding you towards new opportunities, new businesses, new jobs, uh, things like that. And, you know, that's exactly the direction I would go in with the Two of Cups. Again, obviously it could be love. You have the King of Pentacles. Again, this row is pretty straightforward. I feel like one year from now that you're going to feel just stable, secure, like you kind of could be working on building a bag as well, as far as your finances are concerned. I have something about an investment popping into my head as well. So if you're making investments, 
then I feel like there could be a lot of success. Again, I tell people all the time, be super careful with investments. Uh, underline that 20 times because, you know, Uranus and Taurus, right? Number one, Uranus and Taurus does not like get rich quick. So, you know, if someone comes to you and is like, oh, I have this amazing investment where we're gonna go invest in, I don't know, like shrimp or something like that, I'd be like, no. <laughs> Especially if they're like, you're gonna make a million dollars overnight. No, right? These things all, they always seem super sexy with Neptune and Pisces and Uranus and Taurus and it doesn't go well. But if you do a ton of research on an investment and you know for a fact that, um, you know, shrimp are gonna become very popular over the next 10 years because you've done your research, underline that 20 times, then I would make the investment. Again, I would be very careful with crypto because I've said it a million times. I said it before the FTX scandal, right? Who was right? Me. I said that there's gonna be about a lot of scandals in crypto. I think there's gonna be a ton of money, a shit ton of money to be made in crypto if you do your research, plain and simple. With the Queen of Cups, you have the Hierophant marriage. You're gonna marry this person, plain and simple. Are you kidding? Uh, this is the person you're gonna marry. Some of you could be married in a year. What's crazy is that uh, other signs have had something very similar. Like a lot of people have had these love readings and I, I just think we're entering, maybe we're entering into a time of love, who knows, right? With the two of cups, you have the empress, there you go. <laughs> uh, divine counterparts right here. So if you want love, definitely divine counterparts. Uh, even if you don't want love and even if you do, if you are working on a project that you feel a connection with, I love getting these two together because it says you're integrating your energy. It's like you're using both energies to create a project. You could be, I, I don't know, I get like podcast or YouTube for a lot of you or something like that. And I would definitely do it. Or you could be sharing your voice as well, which would make a lot of sense again with the astrology. So this could be through like a newsletter, whatever. If you're working on anything about getting your ideas out there, Taurus, a lot of success. And here you go, with the King of Pentacles, you have the King of Cups, again. So definitely will be something very permanent, long-term, if you're attracting love into your life. This whole entire reading was basically about you being in a very successful relationship. So if you don't want love, sorry. <laughs> but it is what it is, right? It's only one reading. Uh, we're gonna pull five themes now. We're gonna see if there's anything else that wants to come up. You have this ostentation card, again. Uh, this card represents something fake and something real. And it basically says, can you tell the difference? right? Can you tell the difference between something that is genuine and something that isn't? Trust the evidence, justice card. Justice is my card that says, what does the evidence say? Don't trust words, don't trust, um, you know, only trust actions. Uh, next, you have this assertion card. So I would definitely be assertive. You have that queen of wands. Queen of wands really goes for the things she wants. She doesn't second guess herself. She doesn't question things. She really goes for what she wants, not what everyone else wants. Uh, you have this achievements card. Uh, there are clearly a lot of achievements that you will have when we get to the end of the year or when we get to one year from now. I feel like looking back, you're gonna say like, wow, I accomplished a lot. I feel like some of you could be accomplishing more than you ever have ever. I actually think you should make that a goal. Again, not telling you what to do. I don't think Tarot should tell you what to do, but you know, what I would say is it might be like a good idea for you to say like, how could I accomplish, you know, it's like maybe in 20 years you accomplished a certain amount of things. I feel like if you said to yourself, how could I accomplish what I accomplished in 20 years in one year, then you'll actually do it. I know that sounds crazy, but how could you do it? <laughs> and I would do it, is I would make it a goal. Uh, you could also be attracting a Capricorn. You have Capricorn a bunch of times here. Uh, next you have this exaltation card. I love this card. Uh, you are being lifted up on a pedestal. So you have the Empress, definitely could be glowing in the future or just accomplishing a lot. And you have the fortune card, are you kidding? Definitely great fortunes coming in for you. But this is like stuff that you're working for. I want to stress that again, Uranus and Taurus, nothing is necessarily gonna be easy. Uranus and Taurus doesn't like that. There's a old saying, easy come, easy go, right? So Uranus and Taurus is like, no, slow and steady, when, I, I hate saying slow and steady wins the race, but slow and steady wins the race. By going slow and steady, you're gonna build something permanent that lasts, not something that runs away. So really good, love it. Thank you for being here, Taurus, and definitely enjoy your year.